Hi guys, how was your day? I hope it's going good. Today I'm going to teach you about the Underground Railroad. As you may think, it might be an actual Underground Railroad with train tracks, it wasn't. It was a network of people, of slaves, trying to get north and of people helping them. They would stay at different houses every night until they got safely up north. First step to escaping, um, the first step on their trip to, on the Underground Railroad was escaping the slave owners. This could be very difficult because the slave owners were really strict. And if they were caught even trying to escape, they could be punished very severely by being whipped, beaten, or even killed. After they got away though, their journey wasn't over. They had to get to different places on how to get there. Sometimes they would stay at houses or they could build places on the road um, for them to stay. This is a uh, tent of where they stayed at. Um, they could use use whatever they stole from their slave or their slave owners or they found what they found on the way and they would meet up with other people and there could be up to 10 people living in a small tent together trying to stay safe from the people trying to catch them once their slave owners found out that they were missing they sent out bounty hunters trying to find all the slaves so it was very life risking and very brave of them to go through this This is an example of an underground house. They would go down here and go, and they would go onto the underground, and they would hide there until a couple days until they thought they were safe enough to go on to the next or point in their destination. These are some of the great people of the Underground Railroad. This is Harriet Tubman, John Fairfield, and Levi Coffin. They helped a lot of people get there, get up north safely. Even when they got back, Harriet Tubman reached safety, but she went back over 50 times trying to find, help other people and trying to get them safe. Some slaves had to cross long rivers to try to get to safety. They could either go on boats or they would go, they would just try to swim. They had to be very secretive though and couldn't be out in the open or the bounty hunters might find them. It was very scary for them because they would take their children and knowing that they were risking their lives and their children's lives was very brave. This is a timeline of what has happened throughout the Underground Railroads of some important dates. In 1960, 20 captive slaves were sold in Jamestown, Virginia. What they would do is they would go to different countries and steal people from there and take them back to America and to the South and they would put them up for sale for a lot of money and they would be taken away from their families. In 1636, North America's slave trade began, and that was when the most of it started, and a lot of people were buying slaves. In 1682, Virginia declares all black imported slaves are slaves for her life. So that means the second that you were declared a slave, you could never be free again, and you could never live a normal life. You were always someone else's property. And then in 1775, Georgia starts to take action against slavery. This is how badly slaves were beaten for not following rules or for not doing their work correctly. They were beaten with whips, with tree branches, or even uh, paddles. And this is the many reasons why they wanted to run away. Between 1810 and 1850, the South lost an estimate of 100,000 slaves. A lot of people, the Underground Railroad was a very successful thing. It helped a lot of people in a lot of lives. Without it, there wouldn't be a lot of people who, today because their ancestors were saved.